let's talk Pac-12. I mean, you know we got to. Uh, we do it almost every show at this point. But we got to go ahead and get it out of the way because, you know, we have to continue talking about this until something gets done. Now, first off, I, I don't know anything anymore. Any information that I have seen or that I have been sent has just been a mess. It is a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a lot of conflicting stuff, right? As of yesterday, uh, or I guess last week, like I've never seen anything like the media mess, right? CBS's Dennis Dodd, uh, the New York Post's Andrew Marchand, Action Network's Brett McMurphy all claim that Fox is out of the Pac-12 negotiations. John Canzano, uh, who has always been pretty reliable, swears that Fox is involved. Like, it, it's crazy to see the back and forths, right? There's a lot of hurt feelings going on uh, on, on, you know, something that at the end of the day, we're not going to know anything about until a deal gets done or somebody moves. Like, I've not talked about this in weeks. So we'll, we'll try to get uh, caught up a little bit. Now, we now have had multiple Pac-12 presidents go on the record, which does not happen often. Uh, but just to keep track, that is the leaders at Washington State. Uh, Oregon State, Utah, Arizona, and Arizona State, and the AD at Colorado. Now, notice that I did not say Washington or Oregon or even Stanford or Cal, right? To make things even more weird, the new president at Oregon, John Carl Scholes, was previously the provost at Wisconsin, where he was very much in favor of the Big Ten expanding by taking in USC and UCLA. Now, he said uh, after the move was announced last year, this expansion helps solidify the Big Ten Conference as the one true national powerhouse conference with member universities, teams, and fans stretching from coast to coast. As importantly, it adds two outstanding academic institutions to the Big Ten, the premier Power Five academic conference in the country. And then, of course, once he took over for the Ducks, he hedged on that a bit and uh, it stated that he wants to see what's in the best interest of the University of Oregon before answering any expansion questions. But I digress. Uh, when these presidents have spoken... Some have at least stated their expectations, which I'm sure Commissioner Klyovkov has heard, right? Basically, the Big 12 got $31 million per school in their deal. The Pac-12 probably needs to get around $27, $28 million per school or more in order for everyone to remain happy. So uh, the question, of course, is where are we on this? Now, two weeks ago, John Canzano said on 750 The Game in Portland that the meeting last Tuesday would be really important because he thinks, and I quote, there's some motivation from the presidents and chancellors to wrap this. Now, he then went on to say, I do think what's going to happen is I think the Pac-12 is going to end up with ESPN for its Tier 1 rights. I think you're going to see Apple and Amazon come in with a streaming service for the Tier 2 rights, which will be the Pac-12 network games, and I think it will be blended together. Now, he also stated that we could hear something about Pac-12 expansion before the media rights deal gets finalized, saying, quote, I think we might get that expansion news before we get the media rights news. What I'm thinking is SMU and San Diego State will probably be informed by the Pac-12, hey, we're extending an invitation, or we're not, prior to the announcement of the deal. Because they're not going to want to be left going, hey, we have a deal, and a day later, oh, we're announcing SMU and San Diego State. So uh, he expects that we were going to get a leak on the expansion front first. And that all sounded great. Like, there was a board meeting scheduled. Now, the board did not meet on Tuesday, and that was per John Wilner. Canzano confirmed it was pushed back to Wednesday, March 22nd. There was no need to speculate on, on what in the world the move might have meant. Could just be a you know, scheduling snafu. Arizona State was attempting to lock up a basketball coach and Bobby Hurley uh, to an extension. I mean, it could have been something crazy. Maybe, you know, one of the kids had to, uh, one of their kids maybe had to uh, come home from school early, sicker. There's no telling. Like, meetings like that do get uh, canceled. But anyway, John Wilner confirmed that the meeting did happen, and he stated that the presidents received a positive update and that the process will continue. The next board meeting is the second week of April. And he pointed out that the situation could be resolved before that or after, and the sources have told him that negotiations with Apple and Amazon take significantly longer than they do with ESPN because those companies don't have contractual templates for college football deals. Every step goes back to the lawyers for review. So you can do with that what you will, I guess. Uh, Jim Williams, of course, writer for Zinger News and a Forbes contributor. This is somebody I've talked about multiple times here. Uh, he had an interesting article last Tuesday titled, Will Amazon or Apple TV Plus offer the Pac-12 a deal they can't say no to? Now, there have been rumors as recently as last Tuesday that ESPN backed out of the Pac-12 negotiations, which I don't necessarily buy because ESPN needs to be able to fill their Saturday and, and Friday night windows. Um, but there have been rumors, you know, a couple of weeks ago that Apple was out because they wanted a whole allotment of games and the Pac-12 wasn't willing to roll with just subscriber-only streaming yet. Uh, but anyway, back back to Jim's article. 
In his article, he states, What we've been able to read from the tea leaves is that the conversation about a possible deal is one that's heavy on streaming distribution over a more traditional model of linear TV. Now, of course, he continued, When I sat down to write this article, it was to point out how hard it would be to say no to Amazon or Apple because of a great deal of research and development money that flows into member schools, not to mention the alumni base who work in the tech industry based less than an hour from the Pac-12 office. But things have changed very quickly to the point where the hard part might be saying yes. Uh, he said indications point to Apple TV as the front runner and attempts are being made by Klyovkov to carve out a package to include ESPN and Amazon. This is very interesting stuff, right? And now he brings up a note to 80s hoping uh, for more exposure with Linear that they would likely have to settle for a lowball deal with ESPN that's probably going to land a majority of games on ESPN+. Plus. But he goes on to say something interesting about Apple here. He said, in 2019, less than one month after the launch of Apple Plus, uh, or Apple TV+, Plus, Apple CEO Tim Cook made it clear that he wanted the Pac-12 rights, and he sent some of his senior staff over to meet then-Commissioner Larry Scott to find out what it would take to land the rights that were not up until 2024. In a 2019 interview with the San Francisco Examiner, former Pac-12 Network's president Mark Shuckin said that Apple is, quote, very interested in learning more about the rights and learning more about the business to determine whether they would be a viable partner in 2024. Shuckin closed with, They said that, on the surface, we look like a good partner to investigate. Apple wants the Pac-12 Conference's primary media rights package, not a digital one. Now, Shuckin, of course, <laughs> was one of the executives fired by the Pac-12 due to the undisclosed overpayments by a distribution partner, which, by the way, anybody notice how that whole story has just completely disappeared? I mean, nobody even brings this up anymore. Like, I, I have wondered this. Is Comcast just going to be cool with letting the Pac-12 pay them back, you know, while moving over to a streaming service, which Comcast will not be involved with? Or are they going to try and stop a streaming deal so the games aren't taken off a of cable? Like, it's just, just something to ponder here. Anyway. Going back to the article, Williams goes on to talk about how much the Pac-12 favors academics, which is not a surprise, of course, and how some schools are really tied in with the tech giants at Apple and Amazon. He wrote, Stanford is the home of Apple's multi-million dollar virtual reality research and development lab, along with the medical school uh, having an arraignment with the company to test the Apple Watch heart monitoring program. A study done by Universum in November 2022 proved how involved Cal and Stanford are in the tech industry. He followed that up by talking about how Stanford and Cal have the highest number of alumni employed at top tech destinations like Google, Amazon, and Apple before diving into Amazon's involvement in Seattle at the University of Washington. Uh, he said Washington and Amazon have joined together to create a science hub, which is an effort that deepens the relationship between the two organizations and will advance innovation in core robotics, artificial intelligence technologies, and their application. Amazon's initial investment of $1.9 million dollars will support a broad set of programs, including fellowships for doctoral students, uh, collaborations among researchers, and support for collaborative research events. The Hub's initial focus will accelerate AI robotics and engineering in the Seattle area while embracing neighboring academic institutions and the public through events. Now, it's not just those schools, right? He mentions Apple and Amazon having a major presence in what's known as the Silicon Forest, Oregon and Oregon State. Other schools have seen their academics improve dramatically due to their involvement with the Pac-12 and those tech giants. Utah, of course, being invited to join the AAU in 2019. That was the first public school invited since Georgia Tech in 2010. Now that I'm thinking, that's not actually a public school. So, I mean, it had been a long time uh, for, before Utah was invited uh, that they had actually invited a public school. Jim continues on by stating that he's been told that Klyovkov is nearing a deal with Apple TV Plus and will have access to Cook's right-hand man, Eddie Q, uh, who is the Senior Vice President of Services of Apple, he is the one, of course, who masterminded the Tech Giants deal to stream every MLS game through a joint platform between them and the league. It was also Q who met with Fox Sports president Eric Shanks to set up a package of 15 games that Apple will produce and stream, but air on the linear network. Now, of course, MLS Deputy Commissioner Gary Stevenson said in an interview, as part of that agreement with Apple, we discussed the idea and they agreed and in fact endorsed the idea of us doing some selected linear agreements so that we could continue to show our product to fans who haven't uh, either seen it or are in the process of becoming streamers and aren't yet. He said, we wanted to make sure that as this transition is happening, we still had exposure. Now, I will admit, that sounds like something the Pac-12 might really be interested in. Like, could Apple take over the Pac-12 networks and sell some games to ESPN in order to continue the exposure? Uh, or, or for that point, I mean, I guess Fox as well. Uh, if it's been done with MLS, it could make sense for Klyovkov and company. So the options on the table appear to be this, right? 
Apple TV gets the deal and they sublease games to ESPN or Fox or whoever. Amazon gets a Friday night game. ESPN gets everything else and backloads the non-prime matchups on ESPN+. Plus. This one seems the least likely as it is pretty widely known that ESPN is not going to offer enough money. Uh, or finally, Apple TV gets everything except for two ESPN Friday and Saturday night games each week. I don't think that Apple would really be interested in that. All in all, I mean, I'm at the point of begging the Pac-12 to get this over with, right? Either announce a deal or just say it ain't happening. Everybody figure it out. Like, honestly, I was I was so intrigued by the hire of Klyovkov to replace Larry Scott. I mean, the Pac-12 went outside the box, and they brought in somebody that appeared to be very business savvy. But let's, let's go through a list of what has happened since he actually took over as commissioner. He joined this thing called the Alliance, right? So we got that one. Uh, that voted to block early CFP expansion to the detriment of his own league, uh, which gave USC and UCLA a chance to leave his conference, which effectively killed the Alliance and severely weakened the Pac-12. He then fought like hell to get the UC system to block UCLA's move to the Big Ten, which, of course, note here, did not work. Uh, allowed the Big 12 to skip him in line for a new media rights deal because he wanted to wait and go to the open market. They uncovered overpayments by a distribution partner that the conference now has to pay back. He had FOIA requests prove that he lied about interest in a Big 12 Pac-12 merger. And now, of course, he has been public spottedly, uh, excuse me, they have, <laughs> he has been spotted publicly in Dallas talking to SMU about expansion. And now, nearly nine months later, he still doesn't have a new media rights deal done. I don't know how it could have gone much more poorly for Klyovkov. Like, some of this was the mess that he had to clean up from Larry Scott, but man, like, it has been one thing after another here. Like, hopefully a deal will come soon because I think that I speak for all of us when I say that we are, are tired. <laughs> We're just tired. Give us some semblance of stability with this. That's what, that's what we're really looking for. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.